Welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through my portion of the Players Aid game library, is what I'm going to call it, game collection. Uh, a lot of people ask, or, you know, oh, can we see what you've got? Or they're watching review videos and like just peering in the background. I know I do the same thing, so I wanted to walk you through everything that I've got as of right now, uh, and right now it is kind of early September, well, it's late August 2020. Um, I got a delivery this morning, so this is already gonna be out of date. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the stuff you'll see is mainstays. There's There are fringe items that go in and out. I'm often trading things uh, just to get a hold of rarer items or games which are out of print uh, that we can kind of then get to the table. So, enough rambling and preamble from me. I'll be going to walk you through. We're just going to go kind of row by row, shelf by shelf, and kind of take a look at everything. So, we're going to start with the kind of bigger games across the top of my shelf. So, you can obviously see I've got Giant Killer Robots, which is a big uh, mech, you know, robots, miniatures game uh, from Wet at Workshops. Big Kickstarter a few years back. Absolutely love it. The two brown shoe boxes just underneath that are uh, that's Fields of Fire One and Fields of Fire Two uh, from GMT. Probably my favourite solitaire game, but they don't they come in a little two inch box. It's, it's totally unrealistic to be able to put everything back into those. So I've got separate boxes for each one of those. And what we'll do is we'll pan over here. We've got Space Infantry, uh, and I've got the Storming the Gap as well, uh, World at War 85, from both from Lock and Load, came out at the end of last year. Um, those are, the, the boxes are quite long, which is why I've got them stored uh, that way. Uh, they're, they're, if I stood them up, they're too tall to go into the shelves. So I've got them on top. They're also very densely packed, full of stuff, very heavy as well. So I wanted to keep them up there without crushing anything else. And then lastly on this shelf, I've got uh, the Men of Iron Tri-Pack, which is brand new. I have yet to punch and clip that. I just did an unboxing of that. And then I got uh, Magic Realm, which is something that I'm working through. And there's a some program online and a bunch of stuff on BGG to help me learn that, uh, play that with my father-in-law. That's something that he's very excited to get into as well. Across my other two shelves, I have Invasions. Uh, which is, that's actually Grant's, but I had it here because he brought it over, we played it, and we tried to at least. Uh, so I'm just hanging on to it because we're going to try again a different time now that we've got the scenario book printed off. On top of that is Donning the Purple, which I have the expansion in there. Um, well, well, I have approached that version of the expansion, which we weren't able to get to, unfortunately. Um, so <laughs> we were going to play it this year, but uh, all the conventions, because that takes up to four players, so we couldn't, haven't got to that yet. I got Aeronautica Imperialis, which is uh, a Games Workshop Warhammer 40,000 miniatures game, uh, kind of an aerial combat game. Uh, I have Star Wars Legion, which I'm slowly painting and working through. I have um, Imperium Romanum, the new edition from Decision Games. Uh, again, these are the long ones that won't fit on the shelves. I've got Where There Is Discord, massive big old box from the now defunct Fifth Column games. On top of that, uh, Struggle for Europe and Stalingrad Besieged, both from Worthington. Struggle for Europe's very good. Uh, very nice, fun, introductory game. Light fair. I really enjoy that. Uh, and then we got two of uh, these massive big boxes. I got Space Hulk. Again, that's a tactical dungeon crawler from Games Workshop. Mine's all painted up. Absolutely love that game. It's just a, you know, it's just silly fun. Uh, and then. I've got Stella Horizons from Compass Games, massive game, both massive on the table and massive on the shelf, so those are up there. So that's everything there, and we'll go to the uh, go to the cubes and look through all of those now. So this is uh, the top row of, uh, of this first shelf, so I've got here a number of Compass Games, so we've got Bar Lev, big, massive uh, Arab-Israeli war game. Interceptor Race and Night Fighter Race are Greg Smith Solitaire games. Both fun. Night Fighter Race is a better game that's really, really good. I recommend that one. Uh, we've got Battle Hymn Volume 1, which is Gettysburg and P Ridge. Two separate games, two maps, a bunch of counters in there. Um, nice, attritional American Civil War game. And it's beautiful maps. Uh, that's 
uh, a really, really nice game. And it's made in the US, so it's a little bit more expensive, but if you want to support local, that's a good way to go. Line of Judah is a very underrated game. Uh, there's probably two or three games total, including magazine games from like 30, 40, 40 years ago on the, the war, World War II in Ethiopia. But boy, is it an interesting game, really interesting setting, and, and it's a fun... That was a really cool game to kind of play around with. And then we got Guam Return to Glory, which is part of the company scale system from Adam Stark, where the Guam's a four mapper. It's absolutely nuts. It's huge. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to have space to play the whole thing, at least not for a number of decades, probably. Uh, but we played and reviewed the first one, which was Saipan. And it's a it's a it's a cool game. It's a it's pretty heavy. There's, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of counters, pretty dense. Uh, so I wanted to get Guam, so I had a, one in that series. Because playing around, doing all of the uh, invasions and stuff is good fun. Uh, then we have Unconditional Surrender, which is from GMT, one of the best games out there. I absolutely love it. It has a really cool system, uh, and the way that it uses the same CRT for everything, but but there's some manipulations within it and all the different CRTs. It, 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 it is a grand tactical game, really fun diplomacy and politics uh, before the war gets going. And It's a desert island game for me. I, I just love that one. And then we have Talon. I do have Talon 1000 in there, the expansion, and it's jam-packed. So this is a, it's a tactical aerial combat game but it's space combat so I think things like X-Wing or um, what was that Star Trek one? The Star Trek one, I don't remember what it is. It, it's that style of game but this is hex based so the movement's a bit more regulated but you're, you're you're moving around trying to play around with inertia as you turn and swing and you're firing your lasers uh, and the, the the thing with this one is is the counters are, are like a glass, and you use little dry wipe markers to mark off your laser charges and things like that. It's neat. Uh, if you can get the physical components to work, it's a fun game. So you need better markers than what come in. Fields of Fire. What is in here? That's a good question. This is an empty box, because my Fields of Fire is in here and here. Uh, what do we got in here? Ooh, so I have fun stuff. I have... Wargame Magazine number 56, which has First Team Vietnam. So I've got First Team Vietnam in here. Nice. Oh, and I've got Last Battle Iashima from Revolution Games. Uh, I highly recommend this as a solitaire game. It's really fun. And then I also have C3i29, which has Plan Orange, which is a, a variant of um, Empire of the Sun. Isn't this terrible? I haven't even punched it. But it's an Empire of the Sun... Uh, style variant and it's like a alternate history plan orange was 19 I think it's 1930s uh, if the war had kicked off with Japan before then I have elusive victory and red storm both of which use the downtown system um, red storms the brand new one and it has uh, a more built-in solitaire friendly rules in it which is nice uh, Empire of the Sun, I have uh, not the most recent edition, as you can tell by my small 2-inch box, but it's got the mounted map in it. Uh, and I think I've... Mm, yes. It, it's it's excellent. It is the, you know, pinnacle of large-scale uh, Pacific War games, basically. Then i got a few of my coin games here. So we got Cuba Libre, uh, which is very small-scale. Really fun little tight game. Nice way to learn the system. Uh, then we got Labyrinth, not a coin game, uh, but it's probably one of my favourite CDGs, if not my favourite CDG altogether. Two-player, modern, global war on terror since 2001. Pendragon, brilliant, big, uh, historical coin game. Wild narratives that it's you never have the same story twice. Uh, and then Fire in the Lake, which thematically is one of my favorite coin games. Love Vietnam. We just stick on a soundtrack and just play it and play it and play it. Then we've got Virgin Queen, which is a game we've not played. Here I Stand is one of my favorites, but we've not played that. We've not played Virgin Queen. We got the follow-up. Um, I had someone who had it because couldn't wait for the P500. So 
we were hoping to get that played this year, but again, uh, with with all the coronavirus, it's not going to happen. Then we've got Arden 44, Normandy 44, and Stalingrad 42. All of these are part of um, Simonich's uh, kind of karma of apostrophe 4x series. There's also Holland 44. And there is Ukraine 41, I think. Uh, there's a number of these games. The system's very good. I like it a lot. Stalingrad 42 is fun, even though it's an East Front game, and it's not normally my cup of tea. Uh, I still haven't played Normandy, which is embarrassing. Uh, Last 100 Yards, one of the uh, more recent tactical entries into my collection, and it is very, very, very good. Uh, it does some different things. I highly recommend that if you like tactical games. And Bomber Command, my Bomber Command, no, yeah, I did punch and clip it. I had bought, I got a hold of a copy of Bomber Command because Grant had a copy and I love it so much. That's one of the few games where I went out and got it because I love it so much. Uh, most of the time our, our uh, collections don't bleed over to each other just because there would be too many games, uh, but I couldn't go without having Bomber Command. It's, uh, you know, allies do hidden movement, they plan on a, on a chart and then they execute their raids and then the Germans have to react and kill, 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 or disrupt, disrupt, disrupt. And then there's a big bombing raid at the end and then you got to get home intact. It's, it's such a fun uh, asymmetric game. I just, I love Bomber Command. I would recommend it to basically uh, anyone who's interested in that theme and who wants to dedicate a bit of time to it because the game is a little bit long. And so the next shelf down, I've got a chunk of Legion War games. Uh, I've got Nemesis Burma, Battle of Blenheim. Um, both of those, it's games that on a topic that we don't play much of. Uh, Seven Hex System, Battle of Blenheim. Really neat little system, hoping for more from that. Because uh, it's just such a different way of having a map laid out. I, it's worth checking out just for that. Nemesis Burma was fun. And from that, because it's a Kim Kang game, we were um, advised to look into DMBM Foo, so I just picked that up recently. So that's one that's apparently, you know, almost a classic. It's so, it's apparently very engaging. There's all this resupply and stuff that's really, really good. Uh, other than that, little solo games packed in the middle. I got Target for tonight, Target for today. Those are in the style of B17 Queen of the Skies, but uh, a m much more modernized versions. Bit more fleshed out, uh, but you have a very similar style, very similar feel. Picket Duty is it, it is almost a spiritual successor because it's still that kind of you are a destroyer. You've got a bunch of guns. All the kamikaze planes are flying towards you, so it's pick which guns can target who. Try to shoot them down. Try not to get blown up. But there's also a bit more. Um, you have the you have this crew to deal with of like, you know trying to repair things, trying to put out fires, trying to pump the bilges, trying to do all this other stuff as well. And you can play a long campaign uh, over a course of a number of destroyers trying not to lose too many and, uh, you know, hurt the fleet, basically. Uh, and then Red vs. Reverse is a... It's a Boer War game. It's a single engagement. Apparently there's more coming in this system, which I'm quite excited for, because it has a hilarious and just very fun command mechanic where you send out your orders and it takes time for them to reach uh, your sub commanders based on distance and sometimes they don't want to do them anyway because each of them has individual personalities and they roll a die to see whether they, whether or not they'll be a bit more cautious or they'll just go kind of balls to the walls and do what you want. Uh, so I, it's a very fun game and we also have... Oh, I got C3I31 which has Battle of Wakefield in it, which is part of the Men of Iron series. Well, it's the uh, Blood and Roses, but it's the same system. And it also has South Pacific in it as well. Well, I have has, has some players for that, so that's a, that's a nice introduction. If you're scared off by the Men of Iron tri-pack, try the Battle of Wakefield to see if you like it. And then we've got over here my Commands and Colors Napoleonics collection. So it's Commands and Colors. Uh, this is one of the more complicated ones. And I only say that it's, you know, it's, it's not massively more complex, but there are more units and more nationalities and each unit for each nationality is different. So there's just a, a lot more units on the matrix. You only use two in a given battle, but 
you know, find the right blades and flip through a little bit. Uh, but actually have Spanish, Russian, Austrian and Prussian army expansions. Just adds more goodness to it. Napoleonics might be one of my favourite Commands and Colours games. Uh, I just love the history. That period is fun to play around with. I have uh, Ranger from Omega Games there on the left. A, a very different style of solitaire game. Um, you draw out what you're going to do on a map and you plan it all out, all of your different... And there's no hexes, it's all kind of freeform. You have a ruler and a protractor and you're drawing your patrol. And then there's a almost like a choose-your-own-adventure style book that you read through. But it's not really... Ch you're, you're choosing beforehand your route and then you read through what happens based on the route that you chose and some die rolls and different stuff. It's an excellent game. Oh, and at the top there I've got NATO Air Commander from Holland Spieler. I also didn't mention I've got Brave Little Belgium from Holland Spieler. Uh, Brave Little Belgium, great little introductory game uh, about uh, the Germans marching on through Belgium. Uh, it, like I said, good introductory game. NATO Air Commander is a solitaire game. And it is absolutely punishing. It's very, very challenging, but it's fun. I, I like the theme, and, and it's an enjoyable game. I like that one a lot. Over here, we've got Gallipoli, Churchill's Greatest Gamble. This is an insanely crunchy, uh, very heavy game uh, from GNT. Uh, the Gallipoli campaign is something that's very, very interesting. It's very, very tragic. Uh, this game is a lot. You got to invest a lot of time into it, uh, and it's a very counter dense. You'll need tweezers. It's a pretty big beast. Uh, we've played around with it a couple times, uh, and there's more that I want to do with it, but it's not. It's not for faint heart. Uh, got Wing Leader Victories. Uh, this is the new version. Um, tactical air-to-air -air combat but it's a side scroller so it's a different view not your average game and there's a ton of expansions for that coming out and I feel like every C3i has a new um, scenario for it too so th that's a good way to get an expandable game and we've got some Columbia block games combat infantry it's uh, you command a company which is broken into platoons which is broken into squads so it's a blind block game from that. That That's a fun one. Uh, I think that's eight or nine scenarios you're getting it tactical. They've got a new version, which I think is East Front coming out soon. Victory World War II is a more generic game. We've not played that yet, but it's a, it's just a more generic block game. The the, the maps you play on uh, aren't historical, but you have historical forces. It's, it's an interesting concept, but we've not played through it yet. Uh, Pacific Victory is one of my favorite games of theirs. It's a big... Pacific War game. Uh, it's just really enjoyable. Beer and pretzels. It's not in the heaviest, crunchiest game. Just moving some blocks around, uh, trying to fight over the Pacific. I really enjoy it. Richard the Third is an introductory style game, uh, in the sense that the games take about a half hour. There's three scenarios you can link them across as a campaign, but it's a great, uh, great, great Wars of the Roses game. And it's a block war game, it's just fun, and the map looks fantastic. Uh, then over here we've got a couple unplayed games. Armour Christian Soldiers, purchased that at the beginning of the year, hoping we play it at a convention, but not going to happen this year. Fighting Formations, uh, that's um, from Chad Jensen, the late Chad Jensen, he did Combat Commander. This was a game that, I think, oh, I want to say it came before that, but it might have been after, I'm not sure. But this is kind of the other game that he made. The people who like it, really like it but I think not that many people have played it necessarily. Like, it didn't get as big a reception as the other ones, but it's something that I've punched and clipped and I mean to get around to it. Genesis is a big multiplayer game from the late Richard Berg. Really, really fun. Um, you just got to understand what you're getting yourself into. Uh, it's not the most um, symmetrical game. It's not the most balanced game. It's a historical setting, so some of the powers are weaker than others, and... But it's, you know, you sit around a table for a few hours with some friends and you play, and it's a, it's a good time. We played that at Gen Con at the Insurgency in Indianapolis the other year. Had a good time with it. Then we've got Time of Crisis, which is a card uh, deck builder. So it's uh, almost like a crossover with some, like a Euro-style deck building game. So you've got deck building, but then you're fighting out for dominance of the Roman Empire. You want to be... Uh, you want to be the, the, the seas, you want to be emperor. It's good to be king. And uh, it, it tight fighting each other. It's a cool game. I like that one a lot. 
Silver Bayonet. This is 25th anniversary edition. Uh, very... Is it? Or was it 50th anniversary? No. It was for some anniversary. I forget which. But, uh, uh, it, it's a, it's a great game. Uh, Silver Bayonet is, it's kind of old school, uh, in the, in the, in its feel, uh, but I, I love those initial engagements in the Yardrang Valley. Um, there's so many documentaries about Air Cav and their first uses, and it's, it's a, it's a really good game. There's a bunch of small scenarios that you can play, play the Grand Campaign, which also uh, has a lot going for it as well. And then we've got Silent Victory, which is another solitaire game, much in the style of the uh, Interceptor Race, Night Fighter Race. It's part of the Hunters. The Hunted uses that exact same subsystem. Uh, you're a US sub patrolling in the Pacific, trying to destroy Japanese shipping and Imperial Japanese naval units. Uh, very tense game, has a great arc from start to finish as your technology improves and you get better and better and better. The opening few salvos are full of duds and it's really hard to do anything. Uh, but that's that for that and then we'll move on. So here we've got uh, some games from Lock and Load. Uh, I've got some Nations at War. Uh, I've got some of their Lock and Load Tactical and some other bits and pieces. So on the far left we have Desert Heat which is part of the Nations at War. It's a platoon scale game. It's not tactical but it feels tactical. It's a very clean system, uh, it's really not that complex, and um, there's a bunch in it, so if you buy one, uh, you can very quickly jump to the other ones, and there is also a brand new solo assistant, uh, which we saw earlier as well, that, that pairs with the Storming the Gap, that World at War 85 uses very, very, very similar, if not exactly the same system, just transposed into a different time period. Uh, then I've got Heroes of the Falklands, Lock and Load Tactical, Big Box. Uh, that box is the older set of rules. I've got the new set of rules in the ring binder just above that. Then I've got A Wing and a Prayer, which is a standalone game. It's a solitaire B-17 bombing game, where it's different from things like Queen of the Skies, is you control a whole squadron. Um, so you're flying this whole squadron, and it's, just, it's, it's a different way of doing it, but it has a similar style. Uh, it's probably a little bit more involved than B-17. Um, bit more meat on the bones than that one. Uh, Heroes Against the Red Star. Again, it's uh, part of that lock and load tactical system. Uh, Heroes Against the Red Star is a... Uh, it's post-World War II. Uh, and I've got that because inside I've got... Um, the, I think it's called the... the Bear and a Jekyll or something like that. It's, it's the... Uh, Russo-Afghanistan War. That's something that I was very interested in. So I got that there. Then I got Stalin's Triumph, which is East Front uh, Nations at War. Again, a very clean platoon level system. Uh, here's on top. These are the ring bound rules. It's very, very big, uh, but I've done a video on these. I'm not being intimidated by this. Uh, most of that is examples and illustrations and diagrams. It is not that scary and complex. And then over here we have. Simple Great Battles of History, really, really, really good. Um, it, it streamlines some things in Great Battles of History, and it's less daunting. Um, it's a really easy way to play Great Battles of History. I would recommend that uh, very highly. And over here we've got Paths of Glory from GMT, tragically never played. Uh, this is an older edition. Um, I, have, I have the older edition with the old map. I got this... Uh, second hand and I've got the player's guide in there but we just haven't gotten around to playing it. Then I've got some of my great battles of history here. So we've got uh, Conquest of Gaul which inside that is the um, the Warrior Queen Boudicca expansion as well. I had that for a while so we went out and got a second hand copy of Conquest of Gaul which was out print at the time. Big new version of SPQR um, there's a lot of game in that box. If you pair it with the simple Great Battles of History rules, you will have game and game for days, so very exciting. Um, Victoria Cross 2, it's a it's a two-pack. It's got the Battle of East Andwala and Battle of Rock's Drift. You can play them solo nice and easily. That's actually why I bought that, or why I got a copy of that. It's because it was for solitaire play, but it looks like it's got decently robust two-player in there as well, so... You'll see more of that coming soon. 
Then we got Sekigahara, big 3H box from GMT. Beautiful game, two player CDG. Um, a fairly introductory. Uh, if that was your kind of first big war game, you'd have a great time with it. Then over here we have Twilight Struggle, the classic. Um, my copy is a number of years old now, uh, but <laughs> it's like bursting out of the box because of all the different turn zero stuff, the mounted map and everything. I need to figure out where to store that better, maybe get a three inch box. That plain white box is uh, Tokyo Express, which is an old um, solitaire game. I have not played it yet, uh, I, I just acquired that recently, so I will get to that soon. But apparently it's really good AI in it, which is what I'm in, interested about. Then we've got A Few Acres of Snow, which is a Martin Wallace design um, from Tree Fog Games. This is it's one of the first ever war games we ever looked at, but we never got. Uh, at our local game store, they had A Few Acres of Snow and kind of Twilight Struggle. And those were a couple of games that we'd always look at uh, whilst we were playing other board games and Euros. Grant was really interested in it. We just never got to it, and I was able to pick that up uh, recently, so we'll get to that very fairly soon. And I got a couple s solo games over here. We got D-Day at Iwo Jima and uh, D-Day at Omaha Beach. Both of those solo, both of those from Decision Games. And they use the John Butterfield system. Iwo Jima is the new one. This has a mounted map in it and it actually changes it significantly. Um, so that's one that I haven't dived into. Omaha is very good, it's a classic, you should play it. And then one of my favorite games of all time is RAF Battle of Britain from Decision Games. Again, there's numerous editions. There's now like a four inch box with two mounted maps in it um, with all the different variants, but I have an older one, Paper Maps. Just the campaign arc for this game is so good I, I cannot recommend it highly enough. If, if you're interested in Battle of Britain, it's a really nice uh, way to, to kind of play the whole thing. And you can play it solo, you can play it two player if you want, and you can play it um, either from the point of, um, of uh, Fighter Command or from the Luftwaffe. You can do the bombing raids if you were so inclined to do so. Although I have not done that, I've only ever played as Fighter Command, and it's excellent. Then we've got, uh, over here, I've got Reluctant Enemies, uh, which is an OCS game from MMP. It's kind of there, like, here's a tiny little flavor of it. It's a one-mapper. Um, so I, I, it was, I've got it. I intend at some point to learn it, just to say that I've done it and to see if that's something I'd be more interested in. And i got a couple of older games. I've got London's Burning, another solitaire Battle of Britain game, unplayed at this point and then Ambush from Victory Games, which is a classic. Uh, again, it's it's unplayed. I've just been trying to read those rules for the past two years, and just I, I just haven't had the time and the, the nows to do it. And then we've got The Mighty Endeavor from MMP. Uh, I have a very old edition of that. It's an, almost like a paper box, and it's the single map version. I think the newer editions you get, it's, it, it's like a two mapper in there. But I have that uh, also unplayed. Then I've got 1918 Brother Against Brother, uh, which is a Kickstarter game a couple years back. It's a CDG. Uh, we did a video on that. Check that out. It's a unique topic, and the game is uh, fairly neat. Um, that's that's a copy of that. It's not, not a game you'll find in your local game store. And then I've got uh, Men of Iron. I've moved that down from the top shelf since then. We've played it since I started making this, and it is excellent. I cannot recommend that highly enough. Okay, now we've got, uh, on the left-hand side, we've got Down in Flames, Locked On, and Wild Blue Yonder, and those are both the, from the Down in Flames series. Locked On is from DVG, and it's a more modern fighter combat. It, it goes back to, like, F4 Phantoms, but you can get all the way up to, like, F18s, and uh, there's a lot of variety in there, and it's a very lethal game, so it's very tense in that way. Wild Blue Yonder is World War II. So you play with you and a little wingman uh, who's kind of has a, like a little minor semi-player that you play with. So it's you two against two other planes against the opposing player. It's a card game. It's really cool. It can support a lot of people. Uh, Wild Blue On is an excellent place to start if you're interested in World War II. There's a trillion different iterations of this, but Wild Blue On is massive. There's a ton in it. And it was kind of like a reworking and like here, let's put everything in a box, or at least a, a massive chunk of it, 
to get you started. Uh, in between those two I've got Saipan and Tinian, which is part of the Island War series. They've got a couple new ones coming out, I think it's Atu and Guam um, from Legion War games. It, this one's a little two-pack. Got this because Tinian apparently is very one-sided, so they're like, it's good for solo play, good to learn the system. Uh, but it's just on the Pacific War game. I haven't played it yet. Uh, the Dark Valley, big East Front game, two-mapper from Ted Racer. It, it's very, very, very good. Uh, I like that game a lot. And I don't... East Front's not typically my thing. This one I will play Solitaire because it's chip pull and it is very, very good. Then we've got the American Revolution Commands in Colors Tricorn from Compass Games. Big 3-inch box, tons of wood in there. It's Commands and Colors. Uh, it has a whole morale system, which is new to it. And it has these battle decks, which are excellent. Uh, just really amps up the flavor for, for the time period in that one. And then on top of these, let's see, we have in a little bag. Corregidor Return to the Rock 1945. This is a new game from uh, Revolution Games, where I had uh, Last Battle Iashima. It's the same system from Mike Ronella. That's a solitaire game. This one is much bigger. It's a two-player game. Um, there's much more for the Japanese player to do. So it's it's neat. It's really good. Very simple. Uh, very what I mean by that is easy to learn. Uh, you could teach that. That could be your very first war game. No big deal. Uh, there's nice strategy. There's nice tactics to it. Uh, but it's also uh, it more, much more even than the other one. It's not nearly as lopsided. So you're going to have a much better two-player experience with that one as far as I'm concerned. Over here we've got Thunderbolt Apache Leader and Phantom Leader. Uh, also from DVG. Uh, the Leader series is massive. There's a ton of titles in it. Phantom Leader is one of my very first Solitaire War games. And I really, really like it. It's got a place in my heart for that reason. The mission resolution is very quick and easy. You feel like you're a little phantom at squadron or flight, just zooming about. You dodge one or two things, drop your lo payload, blow something up and fly out. It's it's very quick and I, I, I don't know, I liked it. It was really nice. Thunderbolt Apache Lead is probably uh, more favored by a lot of people because there's more meat to it. So they both have a place in my collection. One's much quicker and, and maybe a bit lighter. Thunderbolt Apache Lead the resolution is much more meaty. You know, you're flying around, you got a bit more time, you go on with a bunch of different hexes, a bunch of different targets, and you have to kind of clean up the map the way that you see fit. Then we've got War Along the Great Lakes, and uh, that's new-ish from Worthington. Haven't played it yet, but nice theme, great components. And I've got the Civil War from Victory Games, a classic. Um, have not played that yet, but intends to at some point. And then we've got Quartermaster General, the Cold War. Uh, this is a game that plays, I think it's three to five people. I think that's what this one is. It's three to five, or maybe it's three to four. Now, either way, it requires more than two people. I don't think you can play it as a two-player game. And so we just haven't gotten around to that. At some point we will. Quartermaster General series is apparently very good, so we'll see how it goes. And then over here we've got some more GMT fare with uh, Space Empires 4X. I've got Expansion 1 there as well, which I think is its Close Encounters. And that one has all of the different alien technologies and races. It's got another um, Solitaire variant in it. It has a bunch of different you know units that you stick into the game. Sol Space Empires is great on its own, but the expansions just give you more and more and more, which is always fun. And then I've got Kernstown, which is a Civil War game from Revolution. Have not played that one yet, but that's a fairly recent title from them. And then we've got Dawn of Empire, uh, which is Spanish-American War from Compass Games. Uh, we've played around with it. Um, I want to maybe explore some more. Uh, it's a very different style of game than anything that we've really played uh, with what you're doing. So more to come on that maybe. And then we've got Skies Above the Reich from GMT. This is, again, another solitaire game. You can play it co-op. We have played it co-op. The co-op is fine. Um, you basically just add a couple extra guys and then split everything in half. Which It's okay. It's not, it's not bad. Um, you just 
that you have fewer resources at your disposal and a bit less control because you don't have that pool of everything. Uh, but as a solitaire game, it's great. Uh, there's a lot of decision making in this one versus some of the other solitaire games out there where it's kind of rolling on some charts and more story driven. This one's much more tactical uh, in, a, in that sense. Although it, not massively complex. Uh, then I got 13 Days, which is from Ultra Pro. Uh, really, really tight little game. Two player, plays in 45 minutes. People say it's Twilight Struggle Light. Yes and no. It gives you the, you get a similar feel, and you're doing some similar things. Uh, but it's its own, it's its own little beast. I love Thirteen Days. I like the theme as well. Very fascinating little piece of history. And then finally, over here we have my Conflict of Heroes collection so far. I got Awakening the Bear, uh, which is the second edition. I got Storms of Steel, which is the third edition, and I got Guadalcanal. And the Guadalcanal is the first printing of Guadalcanal. But it's still, it's Conflict of Heroes second edition, so it's got the second edition rules in it. Oh, but it's only its first printing. It doesn't say that on the box. Um, Conflict of Heroes is an excellent combined arms tactical series. Production quality is off the charts. Any version of the rules is good. Uh, we've played with the third edition rules. They're really really neat. We've played with the second edition rules. Also very very good. Um, one of them just gives you, 3rd edition basically makes things a little less certain. That's their element of chaos in there as well. Then I got one of my favourite games of all time, Red Alert, Space Fleet Warfare from PSC. It's commands and colours, sci-fi ships. That's all it is. Play on a massive board, tons of little sci-fi fleets on little standees, and you just shoot lasers at each other until someone's dead. And it's fantastic. I love it. It plays to the toy factor, it, I love sci-fi, it's just right up my alley, and you get a quick little war game out of it as well. On top of those I have Red Winter from GMT, um, that's a new acquisition, so it's um, uh, Russo-Finnish War, uh, 19, is it, was it 41? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, and then underneath that, that little black box in between them is uh, District Commander Marikas from Hollandspieler. It's a... A civil unrest, counter protest, revolutionary style game. It's in a generic setting. It's like set in like a generic kind of a South American, Central American city. But you have like a government faction, and they're trying to smoke out, uh, you know, uh, rebellion leaders and protesters, and you know subversive types and, and they're trying to like hide themselves and then like do all of these secret actions and, and I don't know it, it's we have we play, we tried playing with it once the rules were a little bit intense and we had just played a massive big game with like Stalingrad 42 or something insane like that and we, we like I was like oh we'll just crack out this small game and we deeply underestimated how much there was to it, so we will give this another go at some point soon. So this is my second shelf, and it's really a shelf and a half, but this is the other half of the collection, so... Uh, we've got here, on the very far left, it's a game called No Motherland Without. This is actually a prototype copy of a, of a game about North Korea. And this, so we got the prototype a couple of years ago, and it was going to go to Kickstarter, and then I think it, it just it didn't, and the designer Dan Bullock worked on it, and it was actually very recently picked up by Compass Games, and it's getting a full release there, which we're very excited about, because this is a card-driven game, um, but it has a bunch of different um, kind of little areas with which to play around with. There's like uh, regional infrastructure, there's different defectors, there's foreign opinions, all this stuff that you're trying to manage with these cards. But you do it from, from a historical perspective. So I think you go, it's, it's, and I don't know, oh, I'm going to mess it up now, but there's basically three periods for the three supreme leaders they've had, which is Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-il, and Kim Jong-il's dad. Which I, I'm not right. I don't. Mm, I want to say it was Kim Jong Il as well, but it's Kim Jong Il the first. But I don't. I don't know if that's true. 
I can't really remember. But you go through these three different decks and these three periods and you're trying to, as the North Koreans build up, tighten your security, minimize defectors. And as the, uh, as the opposition player, it's trying to sabotage things, trying to get as many defectors safely across the border as you can. Uh, all, and, and, you know, turn public opinion. Really, really cool game, but I'm really glad it's getting released. Anyway, uh, we've got Dead of Winter, which is a co-op, uh, kind of Euro-style game. I like the storytelling in that game. It's a fun game. Uh, but yes, not a war game. Then we've got, I do have Beyond Valor, and I've got Paratroopers, which are ASL modules. And I have the full ASL rules on a shelf over here, you'll see in a second. I do have the ASL Starter Kit 1. And I know people are hankering for us to play it, and at some point we'll get to it. We just haven't done it yet. And then I've got Thunder Rally, which is one of my favorite GMT titles. Um, it's a it's a it's a NASCAR rally style team racing game. It's fun. You play with a number of cars. It's an aggregate score game. I enjoy it. It's good to play with lots of people. And then above that we got Dinosaur Table Battles from Holland Spieler. Excellent little fun light uh, game where it's just a dino brawl. Who doesn't like that? Uh, and then we've got Manhattan Project, which is by Minion Games. This is, I think, the only worker placement game that I own. That's actually not true, uh, but it's one of two that I own. The other one is the sequel, Energy Empire. But <laughs> Manhattan Project came out. I like the themes interesting it, at the time, you know, six, ten, seven years ago. Um, it was the only... It was a worker placement that, I, that had an interesting historical theme and then I could get played with our, with our group. Then we've got the Lord of the Rings living card game. I have an ungodly amount of that. Love Lord of the Rings. We play this all the time. Just co-op. It's a fun, very hard, difficult game to play with. Good story in it. Then we've got the American Civil War, which is a Hold the Line title from Worthington. Not played that. Then I've got Dixit, which is like a picture-based um, party game. Just play that with uh, casual groups and with family. That, that. And I've got Peloponnesian War, which is a solitaire game. I've played it once, and uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a game that at some point I will figure out. I understand the rules, but strategically it's very wide open. It's, it's a, I don't know, I need to give that one a go. And above that we've got Arctic Storm, which is another Finnish Winter War game. We had Red Winter earlier, this one's a, an older one. That little kind of one inch box from GMT. Haven't played that yet, just got that fairly recently. Then we got a couple magazine files in there. I've got issues of C3i, I've got rifles in the Pacific, rifles in the Ardennes, a um, bunch of different titles like that. And you can see I've got the ASL second edition binder that is sealed. I have not opened it yet. <laughs> and then I've got, you can see what is the Black Riders expansion for the Lord of the Rings card game? Is it a dice? That's my Marvel Dice Masters collection. Again, that's from probably when that first came out, almost seven, eight years ago. Me and Grant bought a bunch of that and played that fun little game. I played that with my family back in England as well. And then we've got Firefly, uh, which is pick up the liver board game. Elder Sign, which is like a Yahtzee style dice masher, but with a nice theme. Fun for storytelling as well. And I've got Brotherhood and Unity, which is brand new from Compass Games. It's a Bosnia-Serbian uh, war game, which very interesting theme, but it's three players. You can play it with two, so we'll probably do that, but I'd be interested to see the three-player dynamic with it. Um, How the West was saved. It's the Russo-Polish War. Uh, that's one that's uh, a small format game. It's a little small game from a, from a Polish publisher, so we're going to play that at some point. And then we've got Commands and Colors Medieval, big CNC game, the newest one uh, from GMT Games. It's more CNC, just a different, slightly different time period. It's post Ancients, basically. Then we've got Reds, which is another Ted Racer two player game. Uh, Russian Revolution, or Russian Civil War is one, I should say. So it's uh, white Russians against communists. And then above that, that little magazine up here. Let's see. It's the new, it's Ariette, which is part of the TCS Tactical Combat Series from MMP. And um, that's brand new. I've just barely cracked it open and looked through it. Then we've got over here Warhammer Dreadfane, 
just painted that just a little tactical skirmish board game more Star Wars Legion Star Wars Armada big tabletop miniatures war games I love Armada it's fantastic uh, Legion I've just painted it I have never played it but I like the miniatures want to paint them that's all and then we've got Shiloh which is a civil war game from Worthington uh, it was it's a nice system it has a lot of attrition in it and uh, it was uh, we played the Antietam game Shiloh's a, a newer offering haven't played it yet Mayor Nostrum is a multiplayer dudes on a map style economic civ building game um, one of my favorite non-war games it's really 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 good I love it Field Commander Napoleon excellent DVG game it's a little bit on the pricier side, but you can see the box is freaking massive and there's a ton of stuff in it. Get your money's worth, it's a good solo game. Then we've also got The Devils to Pay, which is a small uh, box. Uh, I think it's the first day of Gettysburg it's from Herman Luttman, uses a modified blind sword system. Then I got 1950, The Forgotten War from CSL. Uh, it's a Korean War game, we played that. It was, uh, it was a fun little system and it uses. So then we've got. 1950 the forgotten war which is a korean war game um from csl um it's a little small box but the map folds out it's a very fun game where you have these um blind combat values you know you might attack each other but then you draw these from a pool of chits and that gives you your attack and defense value for that battle so every engagement uh, you have modifiers on top of what your printed strength is and so you're never quite sure. You're never. You can never be certain of your edge unless you really stack things. But if you do that, you're compensating in other ways. Uh, interesting little game. And I've also got Secret Hitler, which is a like a social deduction style game. Basically, a way to sit around a table and uh, yell at each other, uh, which is always fun for the right crowd and for a party. So here we've got Combat Commander. I've got Pacific, uh, then Europe. Um, Combat Command is a tactical system from GMT that uses a card-driven system. One of the first war games we ever played, and we've played it a lot. Uh, it's one of Grant's favorites. It's a very enjoyable game. Pacific just had a reprint, so um, I'm just punching and clipping that. We're going to get to that very soon. Then we've got Death Valley and Twin Peaks, which are part of the Great Battles of the American Civil War series from GMT. Death Valley is a, is an amalgamation of a lot of stuff, I think, because uh, there's a lot of battles in there, like a lot of stuff. Um, so I don't know if they just kind of put a bunch of stuff together in there from different magazines, as well as original battles or amalgamates a few, but it's huge. Uh, Twin Peaks is just South Mountain and Cedar Mountain, just two battles in that one. And um, we've got Reluctant Enemies, uh, which is an OCS game from Multiman Publishing. This is like baby's first OCS. Um, it's one mapper, it's a smaller game. I think it's fairly one-sided, um, but it's a good way to learn the system, I guess. Which is kind of what I'm hoping to get out of that. Uh, then we've got Memoir 44, which is a Commands and Colors game from Richard Borg. That's a, um, this is the one with the plastic tanks, World War II. It's fun, it's light, plays quickly, play it with anyone. It's a very, very popular game. Then we've got Root, which uh, is from Leader Games. Uh, nice little asymmetrical war game. Uh, it's kind of, people say, oh, it's like a coin game. Well, yes and no. It's its own thing, but it's very enjoyable and you can play it with lots of people. It's good fun at a convention. And then I've got the Battle of Tanga, 1914 from Legion War Games. Uh, it's a World War I game uh, set in Tanga, which is off the coast of, uh, of what is it? Of one of the German territories down there that they that they took, I, it, the name eludes me, but I should know that. Uh, but uh, that's new. Oh, well, it's not new. It's actually an older game of theirs, but I just picked it up recently, so I don't know that much about it. But it looks interesting at least. Now then, I've got two other coin games. I got Gandhi. And I've got Andy and Abyss. Andy and Abyss, the first one, very good, clean system, and then Gandhi's the newest one. Well. At the time of recording, there's others on the way. Gandhi's the newest one. Very, very, very different in style, uh, but also very enjoyable. I need to play more of Gandhi because it offers something very different uh, in this, especially from the uh, non-aggressive uh, 
the non-violent factions. Then we've got across the top of that, I got At All Costs, which is um, from Hollenspieler two play game. It's a, bit, a little bit different from some of their other titles. It's a bit bigger and a, and a more of a traditional ish war game. Uh, so that one's one we're going to get to in the future as well. And over here we've got 1960 Making of a President, two player card game, election based game. It's kind of a classic, it's been around for a while, but the GMT edition really pimped out the components as far as I'm concerned. Then we got Cruel Necessity, which is a solitaire English Civil War game from Victory Point Games. Victory Point Games is, in theory, putting out a second edition of that, but uh, who knows when it's actually going to come out. The news on that is very few and far between. So this is the original version with the pizza box. It's a very, very good, fun, good way to learn English Civil War history, but it's a good game as well. It's a States of Siege game. Then I have a few other Great Battles of History titles. We have Caesar and Alexandria, Ran and Samurai. Ran and Samurai, obviously a bit more traditional in the sense of Great Battles of History. Each of those boxes has a bunch of different battles in it and uh, a bunch of different armies. Caesar and Alexandria, Caesar in Alexandria, excuse me, is just a single battle. It's a naval landing and then uh, an urban ancient street fight. So it's one that I'm very interested to play around with because it offers something very different from the other ones. And then we've got Struggle for Europe, uh, which is... That's interesting. Did I move that? Have you already seen that? Struggle for Europe is a very good little easy light war game. Um, two player. It uses the Lincoln system. Uh, and I enjoy it very, very much. Dawn of the Zeds is another States of Siege game from Victory Point Games. It's a zombie game. It's pulpy. It's trashy. It can play four or five people. It's fun. I like it a lot. Struggle for the Galactic Empire. That's new to me. It's an old game, but I've not played it yet. And I've got uh, four battles in Spain, which is part of... Uh, I think it's the Grand Battles series. Uh, this is It's Volume 8. There's Volume 9. They just released three battles in Germany, I believe. Uh, but it's a Napoleonic series. It's one that I've... I picked it up because I want to try it out because they had the new one coming out as well. But if I like it, there's a ton out there, which is nice, fun stuff to explore. Then we've got Hunt for the Ring, a Lord of the Rings game. Not played it, it's uh, recently picked it up. Haven't had the opportunity to play it. Uh, the Unhappy King Charles, another English Civil War game from GMT. Also a recent acquisition, have not played that yet, but it's a two-player game, card-based and uh, it's a, it's area control, lots of areas uh, on a map. Then we've got This Guilty Land from Hollenspieler, two-player game about the political system that enabled um, slavery to, to basically persist. So I don't know that much about it beyond that, but it is a, it is a political game, but it has a very important and very... Um, I guess you'd say topical theme to it as well. And then we've got Night Fighter, which is uh, it's a it's a weird game in that one player plays it and the other player is just the referee. Uh, so I, it, I haven't played it yet, but there's a, there's a computer game version which I think might be more apt for it. And then the tiny little sliver box in between it is the latest C3I issue, which has um, Waterloo in it. Fun game. Uh, we played that at WBC with Mark Herman and Magazine's Great. And then we've got The Burning Blue, uh, which is a Battle of Britain game, uh, but it's a much more detailed, is what I'm going to say, than RAF, in the sense that the Luftwaffe has like a planning sheet where they map out their raids, and it's an air defense game. So they'll have like, uh, you have radar stations, you have Observer Corps, you have uh, readied flights and flight circling and patrolling. All this stuff has to be mapped and planned out. And then it's kind of making all that happen within the constraints of what you've given orders to. Next to all, Korea. Uh, this is the newest edition, I think, that came out. Haven't played it. Um, it's a big game, though. Uh, but it's one that people like. Churchill, Big Three Struggle for Peace from GMT. Uh, it's a three-player game. There are bots, so you can sub a player, but if you can get three players for it, tight little back-and-forth game. 
where you use cards to, to debate issues, and then once your debate is done, then you resolve those issues that you won or other people won to, to basically push forth the, the World War II war effort, basically, and carve up the peace for post-World War II uh, the world. Then we got Pax Pamir, the second edition. Uh, unbelievable game. Highly recommend. Uh, it's it, it's a war game. It's a political intrigue game. It's an area control game. It's a, a, there's some economics in it. There's a market. Really, really good. Very tight game. It was very punishing at first before we kind of figured out how to play it well. Uh, but now it's a game that I would consistently go back to. And best components out there. Age of Napoleon, two-player game uh, that I picked up in a trade. Haven't played it yet. And then we've got, uh, I know it's in Spanish, but it's Ships of the Line, Trafalgar 1805. Uh, it is a, it's kind of a tabletop miniatures game, but it's touted as a board game, but you have little plastic ships and you you line up the Battle of Trafalgar and you have French ships, Spanish ships, and, and English ships, and you you sail the lines into each other and there's little measurements and tools for showing uh, cannon blasts and you just blow each other to hell. Then I've got a couple uh, Arkham Horror games. We've got Arkham Horror 3rd Edition and Arkham Horror The Living Card Game. Those are just fun games for myself. Typically I just play those solo and it's I like the story and the world of that so it's just a way to engage in those and I like the flavor of horror games typically. Then I've got First Martians, again a solitaire game, at least that's how I've played it so far, I haven't played it with Grant yet, uh, but you play it co-op, it's trying to survive on Mars whilst everything around you blows up. Now the game was cool, uh, the rules are terrible, but that's kind of, a f like, that's well known and documented, they're awful, uh, but you can go on BGG and there's better versions of all that kind of stuff. Uh, so here we've got, I've got Battlestar Galactica. Which is a great board game. I love BSG, so the theme is good for me. It's a big game. I uh, played it with my family, who are all big fans. I love that game. Then I've got Roll for the Galaxy, which is um, it's a it's it's a dice rolling version of Race for the Galaxy. It's a bit more involved than Race, uh, but I Grant's got Race for the Galaxy, so we play these every so often. Uh, just kind of fun side games. My other Battlestar Galactica box is actually chocked full of the Lord of the Rings living card game cards. <laughs> That's how much of that game that I have, and uh, it is literally full. I can't buy any more. Then I got Raid on Saint Nazaire, which is a solitaire game. Uh, it's kind of a classic at this point. It's point-to-point -point movement, and you play as British commandos raiding Saint Nazaire, and there's a story to it. It's very, very difficult, very punishing game. Then we've got The Conquerors, Alexander the Great, which is something I picked up recently. Uh, apparently it's fairly one-sided, so I'm going to play that one solo, most likely. Uh, but, I don't know, I had the opportunity to pick it up and thought, eh, it looks interesting, we'll give it a go. Uh, we got some of my favorite games. These are the kind of games that I like when we're not playing hardcore war games. If I can get people to play Blood Rage or Rising Sun, just big, um, kind of pulpy dudes on a map. Still conflict-driven, with interesting, fun little mechanics, and just they're just fun. I enjoy those kind of games. Same with uh, Cyclades there. Cyclades has a great bidding mechanic as well. So there's some economy in there and how you're trying to bid and outbid and bluff each other on what money you do and don't have. Just takes that to the next level. And then we've got Brief Border Wars from Compass, which is a four pack of games. Haven't played it yet, but Brian Train's a great designer. So it's one that uh, I'm looking forward to. And it's area movement, which an area impulse, which is something that I like. Uh, similar in style to things like uh, Last Battle Iwashima and Corregidor Return to the Rock. We've got Tank Duel, which ironically is not just a duel for two players, you can play it up to eight, I think, which is kind of nuts, but it's uh, just a beer and pretzels, you have a tank, and you're just rolling, well, not rolling, you, you play through cards which have dice, which have numbers that you're basically rolling, you're pulling cards and shooting each other to death. Uh, fun game for lots of people. Then we've got Race to the Rhine from Phalanx. Race to the Rhine was interesting. It's again, it's a three-player game. You can play it two modified, but I think three players is where it's going to shine. It's a logistics game. Um, the combat is fairly abstract, and it's more like you're doing that to roadblock each other. But um, it's literally you're you're moving units and supplies up across Western Europe to try and get over the Rhine first. 
Um, we got Warriors of God. That's a new game that I picked up recently. It's not new. It's new for me again. Um, always a, an interesting theme for me, and it's some point-to-point uh, -point area style movement, which I, I'm interested in it, and I've heard decent things about it as well. Uh, then we got in this section. I got Hanabi, which is a little four-player card game. Uh, the Legend of Robin Hood, I just picked that up from my father-in-law. No idea about it, but I uh, was like, yeah, sure. And then Zulus on the Ramparts is a uh, States of Siege solitaire game from Victory Point Games. You can see it's half the size of Cruel Necessity, uh, and it, it really is. It's a little bit smaller game. There's a bit less to it, but it's still very difficult, and it's very fun to play. I like the theme as well. Just put on a soundtrack, play the game, and it's a good time. And then we got Warfighter. Um, I have a lot... A lot of Warfighter, mostly the World War II stuff. Uh, Grant's got Shadow War and some extras as well. But I've got World War II Pacific and World War II Europe in there and a bunch of the mini expansions too. We play that co-op. Very, very enjoyable, um, relaxed, laid-back game that gives you a really good challenge. Then we've got... i got some Dark Souls. There's more Dark Souls down here, which we'll get to. That's just one of the expansions that came into Kickstarter. Uh, and then that MMP game is actually, um, I believe it's South Mountain. Um, it's a Civil War game that's a recent acquisition with a bunch of other games. So I haven't played that yet, but it looks fairly intense. And over here we've got Ghost Panzer, which is part of the Band of Brothers series from Worthington. Shamefully not played. Dunkirk uh, is a two-player game that has uh, some ahistorical outcomes and variants which it was fun that was one of our first ever Worthington games that we played a little two-player game it was nice to see at WBC they had a little tournament going with players and that, that was fun to see and we got next war Taiwan that's one that I have kind of opened up and played around with whereas Korea I hadn't I've had Taiwan for a while uh, it's one of the older versions of it um, it's a fairly involved game uh, if you're using all of the extra rules, because they're like the basic rules, and there's all the advanced rules for air combat and naval combat and things like that. Uh, then they've got Enemy Coast Ahead Doolittle Raid. Great solitaire game. Uh, Jerry White's got a couple. He's got the, the original Enemy Coast Ahead, uh, which is the Dam Buster Raid, and this is Doolittle. This one's a bit, a bit more freeform in how you resolve things. Uh, it's not just doing that trench run style. Uh, resolution for the actual bombing runs but really really fun game i love those games because they tell a story but it's modified entirely by the choices that you make so you get different versions of the same story which that's interesting to me to see how things could have played out differently and uh, we've got norway 1940 that is not played that's from the same company uh trafalgar editions that had that uh, big ships the line trafalgar miniatures game then I got Lord of the Rings, Quest for Mount Doom, which is a, a very light board game, almost roll and move. I will probably shift that at some point. Uh, then I got so there, so this is Energy Empire. This might be my other worker placement game. This is new to me. It's still in shrink. So whilst I have two worker placement games, I've never played this one. I've never even opened it. So I used to say I only had one. Now I've got two. I guess. Then I got three other Warhammer games. I got Storm Vault, Combat Arena, and Beast Grave. Uh, each of those are different. So Storm Vault is identical to that Lord of the Rings Quest for Mount Doom game right there, just with a different theme. So great. Uh, the other two are little different variations of uh, tactical combat miniatures, which miniatures are nice to paint and play around with, and you get a tiny little game, uh, which is nice for playing as like a one shot, or you can invest and get into like building all those which is great and that accordion folder is for all of my map tiles for gloomhaven so here we go bottom shelf but not bottom quality because i got twilight imperium fourth edition one of my favorite games we only played it once but it is amazing just a great experience for the kind of games that we like then i got nemo's war second edition from victory point games uh good solo game you get some good story and narrative out of it, uh, and it plays very differently. Your goals change depending on um, the setups that you play with. And I got Sentinels of the Multiverse, which is uh, a game you play co-op. 
I have an ungodly amount of that in that box that is packed full of all the little mini expansions. Just a deck of cards, you pick heroes, and you fight bad guys. Uh, it is what it is. I enjoy it, but no, I understand it's not for everyone, comic book style. And I've got The King's War, which is another English Civil War game. This is an old, older game. I have not played this one yet, so I recently acquired it, so one that we'll get to the table soon. Uh, then we've got Ponzi Scheme, which is an economic game where you are literally trying to have the best Ponzi Scheme. So it, it, it breaks all the rules of every other uh, economic game that you've ever played, and it's very, very fun, because you're always on the, on the brink of absolute disaster, um, and you're basically trying to not go bust first, and then you just count up whatever money you've got and see if you win. I enjoy it immensely, uh, but it might even say it's not for everyone. And they got uh, Devastation of Indines. In that, I've also got War of Indines and Fate of Indines. It's a two-player beat 'em up game. It's basically like something like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat in a box. It's fun. Again, not for everyone. Quick light game. Then we've got Eclipse, which is a big 4x space game. We love it. Um, it suffers from 4x in that if you get hosed on your exploration, you might just lose the game that way, but a great, fun, enjoyable game that has a time limit, so not going to go on forever. And i got Mage Knight, which is a game that I would mostly play solitaire. I have played it multiplayer, and it got, it's long, but it's a great solo game as well. Um, next to Mage Knight, that's a little spare board for Gloomhaven. Then over here we've got Space Marines, Labyrinth of the Necrons, a very, very light uh, dungeon crawly adventure game. Um, the replay value on that's not massive, um, so that's one that has nice little miniatures and it's a nice game to play with kids kind of a thing. Then I got my Legendary games. I got Marvel Legendary, which I have a bunch of expansions for in there. That was fun, that was my first one, we played it a lot. Then we got Legendary Encounters, which is Aliens. And that blew our socks off. Very fun. We play this all the time. It's super difficult. Uh, but it's just fun, and we love the theme. And then I picked up Predators, because I thought that would be fun. That's what the, uh, the Legendary Encounters Predator one is next to that. You, you can combine them and do all this cross-pollination, but just wanted to get more of the very difficult but fun um, themes of movies that we know. And then on top of those, I got Rivals for Catan, which is a two-player card game version of Catan. Uh, I played that a lot when I was in Germany, and it's a nice way to play Catan two-player. Uh, and it works, which is something that I appreciate. So then over here, I've got Stalingrad, which is part of the... Uh, oh gosh, who is it from? Oh, uh, it's... It's part of... No, i got to get it out, because I don't want to misspeak. It's part of a series where they did, like, major battles. Oh, it's all going to come apart. So this is called The Battle of Stalingrad. Okay, it's from Turning Point Simulations, and it's chapter 20 of 21, uh, which is part of their... What do they call it? Oh. Well... It's like the like most important battles of ev ever, basically. And we've played a number of those. They have a Midway one. We played, oh gosh, what was it? Saratoga, maybe? Uh, they have a bunch of those. Um, small little game. It's called Stalingrad, but really it's like the push towards Stalingrad, and it's an East Front game. And then we got Dark Souls. So I had the Kickstarter for that years and years and years ago. Finally got all the expansions through because the, the uh, full form was very, very slow, but it's Dark Souls in a box. It's slow, it's uh, very difficult, uh, but I enjoy it. It's fun to play solo, and we play it co-op together as well. Then over here I've got my Blood Bowl and my Blitz Bowl. Blitz Bowl is really good. I would actually recommend that maybe more than Blood Bowl because the board game takes about three hours. Blitz Bowl is much, much quicker. If you're playing on the PC, Blood Bowl is much quicker than that as well. Plus, it's fewer minutes to paint if you play Blitzball. Uh, then we got 65, which is a Vietnam tactical war game from Flying Pig Games. Very enjoyable. Solo is good as well. Uh, I enjoy the solo mod on that. I just wish it had more missions, because it has about eight 
and I just wish there was more, that's all. Uh, then in that box that used to be Gamma World uh, is my Axis and Allies set. I had to break down the box and stick it in baggies to bring it over from the UK because I was loath to part with it and then I found a spare box and stuck it in there. Then I got Tank on Tank West Front, uh, which is a two-player introductory war game from um, Lock and Load, and it's literally, I have some tanks, you have some tanks, we have a very small board and we blow each other up. And then lastly in the game collection I have Imperial Assault, which I have that fully painted, it took me a long time, but it's a, it's a dungeon crawl. Some you, A number of players play as the good guys, and then there's one Imperial player who plays as all the bad guys. And it's basically Star Wars Descent. If you've ever played Descent from Fantasy Flight, this is the Star Wars version of it. Which I think is a little bit better, apparently. Uh, then we've got Gloomhaven, which is a game we've played an immense, immense amount of. Uh, we play this with our father-in-law, just play it all the time. And we've played basically through the entire campaign, so now we're just picking off random missions that were unrevealed. Just, just to keep playing whilst we wait for Frosthaven in 2021. So that's all of the game collections stands that I have. Grant has like t almost, maybe not twice as much as this, but it's probably this much and then some more as well. So we'll, we'll show those in the future soon as well. I appreciate you guys tuning in. And I've been Alexander from the Players Aid.com.